I wanted to copy this Dutch bucket system, which is a commercial system I bought, and I wanted to expand it, but I didn't want to have to deal with all of the drilling and cutting and screws that this system involves. So uh, I redesigned it and came up with what I think is a, an easier, better version, and let me show you how it works. It made a modular system Instead of one long 10 foot uh, stand, I'm making two five foot stands and with no screws. It's just the one inch steel tubing and the uh, 3D printed uh, fittings. So let's see how it goes together. Nice and easy. Last one in place before I tighten the last two up. So here, last. Less than five minutes to put that together. And uh, the next step will be putting the plumbing right on top of it. Got a 40 gallon reservoir here, positioned next to the other one. Okay, you can see how my plumbing is coming along. I've got this one and a half inch PVC that I'm running into this T. I have end caps on both ends. I just need one short length to go here. And I'll put an end cap on there. And this is the drain. So I have to drill holes for each pot. And then when the pots drain into this, it just drains right back into the reservoir. Okay, I finished the next step and I've drilled my 10 holes for my buckets. And this works really simply. And then that fits right on the hole. Another shot, there it is. And it just fits there. And then when it drains, when this pot strain, it drains right back into the reservoir. Got these all ready to go. So here we go. Alright, so I've attached my one inch flexible hose end caps and this is my feeder line so it goes to a T right in the middle same thing on the other end end cap and this will get the feeder holes in the next step and what I've done is I've, I've run that line underneath and connected it to this pump which I put in a mesh bag because this system's gonna have cocoa core in it and that'll help keep the cocoa core out of the uh, fresh water inflow when the, the uh, pump sucks the water and it's not so much gonna bother the pump but that little bit of cocoa would uh, eventually clog the emitters so that'll help with that this is what I use to um, heat up the line to make it pliable to make it easier to fit into fittings uh, air dryer works real well just need to punch my holes for the final irrigation line I'll get the line straight and put two holes per pot I'm going to measure that out and punch my holes and then install my uh, irrigation lines and fill up the tank When I cut these holes with the punch, I make sure to support the sides. I squeeze the side of the, the tube as I'm pressing down on the tool. And that works a lot better. When I do that, I do a kind of a twisting motion. So I push and twist. 
and it'll punch right through. Now I'm doing the other end, and the way I do it is I'm measuring every six inches and I'm scoring it. So I'm finding that point and then I'm, I'm making a light mark with my tool just so it would be visible. And then I'm doing all of them just to double check. That's the old adage of measure twice, cut once. All right, there's the finished system except I'm two buckets short. I made a mistake and only ordered eight buckets. So I gotta get two more. That's okay, I'm only planting seven plants. So these are pretty fancy uh, emitters. You wouldn't probably use this. It's got a, um, an inline valve to adjust the flow. And it's got one of these nice stake emitters and a, a pretty high end flexible tube really nice if you wanted to put something together like that it's those five parts including the, the uh, insert into the end and uh, next we'll be uh, transplanting some tomatoes into this system I'm using these very cool hangers that let you spool out the thread it's got a stop on it. You can see that little plastic piece sticking out that's, that stops it. And you, you squeeze the metal here to pull more string out. The only problem with that is that I'll have to climb up there to adjust it, um, which is nine feet up. It's not that bad. I just use the stepladder. You can see how it works here. I could have put it a little lower, but I want to maximize the height that the plants can get. So that lets the plants get all the way up there. And uh, as long as I keep it away from the lights, then it's fine. So you can see I'm even using it to support this massive pepper plant um, on three different lines here. Holy moly, really big baby bell pepper plant, which is about eight months old now and just massive. All right, well, here we are with plants in the new system. And you can see how this works with this bigger cherry tomato here on the string. As the cherry tomato climbs up, I'll let out string from the spool and that will make the lower vine, which will all be picked out See, after these tomatoes are done, that lower vine is going to be done too. So I will just coil it up and you can see how the vine is ready to coil. I'll lower that string down and this bottom will just coil up and we'll put it off to the side of the pot and hang it off of the handle of the pot for support. And that will let me grow an indefinite number of tomatoes. I'll just keep letting that vine grow longer and longer and it'll only get to that eight foot, nine foot height. And then uh, as the tomatoes mature, we'll let the string out. And we're doing that on all of these plants. So here's a younger one just getting started out. And I'm using a combination. I, I use these uh, vine hooks to connect to the string and you can put it onto a young shoot like that or use a bigger uh, vine clip. And since the vine clips, I'd have to tie it onto the string, so instead I just use a hook to connect it to the string. And that works real well. I'll show you how that works here. Yeah, I connect the clip to the plant, and then I use the hook to connect the, the clip to the string. That way I don't have to tie any knots and I can move them up and down really easily. Now you may notice, uh, that this system has a few, these plants have a few suckers. And I'm, I'm letting some suckers grow just because we don't have any more tomato plants right now. I, I took out our big tomato plants that were producing a lot of cherry tomatoes and uh, beefsteak tomatoes. There's the big beefsteak there. And you can see how that, that was in an, another system for a while. And so it's grown already to be nine feet tall. 
and again you can see all the flowers and all the new foliage is at the top of the plant that's how the vines grow so once I harvest these tomatoes at the bottom I've already cut those leaves off and I'll just coil that that vine up down at the bottom and it, unless we uh, make a mistake and break the vine that tomato will just keep on producing and producing and producing for years actually you can these are indeterminate tomatoes so they'll just keep producing for years there's no end to that vining and as long as I keep them healthy I've uh, my, the tomatoes that we removed that were over here, if you see my other videos in the old system, they got so overgrown and I wasn't using anything to tame them like this. And um, those vines were almost a year old before we took them out. So with this, I'll be able to keep these going. And even though we're harvesting a lot of tomatoes outside, we're just getting ready to plant our, our outside tomatoes. Let me show you those since we're talking tomatoes. And you can see I've got the same exact vine system here on the cucumbers and it's working real well. It's training those up and I just have to keep them away from the lights a little bit. And um, here's our tomato stores for outside. And let me tell you the big mistake we made. Some of you can see how leggy they are because we simply started them too early and we kept them under the fluorescent or rather the LED grow lights, but still they've gotten really leggy and um, it'll work out okay. I'm gonna plant them real deep. And so we'll, we'll maximize the roots that we get. And we use real deep pots, so they should be okay. But those are leggier than I wanted. I've, I've moved them so that they'll be under higher intensity light and lower temperature. And that will um, help to prevent them getting more leggy. But hopefully our outdoor tomatoes will do well enough um, we made some beautiful starts, but we let them get out of hand a little bit. And that's just because our weather is real cold here. Um, late this year, it's late April now, and we're expecting freezing temperatures tonight. So um, even a snowstorm. So that's life in the mountains. Let me give you one more look at that tomato hanging on two strings. I've got this one on two strings because it's a lot of weight and uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on these little plastic parts and this little string here because this plant is going to weigh an awful lot by the time it's done. And again, I've left a, a, a big old sucker on here, a massive sucker that has a sucker growing off of it. So those two branches there, um, just because we don't have any other tomato plants going right now, and I might remove those later if they, when they get out of hand, but for now, I'm gonna let those suckers grow. I am gonna trim the lower suckers off of these two new cherry tomatoes though, because those are really in the dirt and they're just gonna grow wild. So we'll focus on the ones that are already going vertical and um, we'll clean those up. Got my nutrient solution in there. Down in 1.9. You see, just right for these young tomatoes. All right, I've got all my emitters ready. The ones that don't have plants are off. Plugging it in. Here it comes. There we go. these and the valves on them so there's no water coming out and I'm still going to keep them inside the pot anyway. Some are really stronger than others looks like. I've got them all going but a, a couple of them are a little weak and we may just need to have the, the line cleaned or it may be that that emitter is, is uh, no good. They're dripping but not spraying like they're supposed to so I'm getting kind of a slow drip there. 
about three of them doing that. So I'll need to troubleshoot those separately. And that happens with um, trip emitters a lot. They're a little bit temperamental. Keep these tomatoes real happy and producing an awful lot of fruit for us as they have been. These aren't new plants, these are actually all suckers. Actually, these dark blue, dark green cherry tomatoes, those two are brand new. Those we grew from seed. But uh, these others were all suckers from bigger plants. If you've seen my previous videos, check those out and you'll see the mama plants that these came from. And we, we do start everything from seed or from our own cuttings now. And please subscribe and check out the other videos and I'll keep posting more. We're getting into our outdoor garden season now.